Nadir Tarani was selected to design the expansion of the faculty in an international competition. Some stellar architects comp competed to work with our faculty, and at the time I can say that, that what everyone was looking for was an architect from the generation just coming up that was just hitting their stride. And Nadir, Katie, and their team fit this bill. Among his many accomplishments and accolades, Nadir has been recognized with 14 Progressive Architecture Awards, the American Academy of Arts and Letters Award in Architecture, and the Cooper, Cooper Hewitt Award for Architecture. I want all of you also to imagine what it might be like for an architect to design for a client that is a school of architects, landscape architects, and, uh, and others who essentially make their living being critics of design. It is like cooking for a room full of fussy chefs. And I must say that Nadir and Katie have handled this extremely gracefully. They have spent hours and hours working with me, our faculty, our students, the staff across the university, and everyone has chipped in. So this project is a collaboration that brings together the accumulated talents and experience of many, many people. I want to turn things over to Nadia and Katie so they can give you some sense of what this collaboration has yielded for the once Vadina Crescent. As has been already uh, outlined, uh, all of you understand the nature and the history of this site. It's not merely a terminus of the campus now, it is now a bridge, a bridge between neighborhoods, and it stands on one of the major civic axes, on the north-south axes. Uh, our mission right now is to give body to the idea of a Daniels building of architecture, landscape, and design, meaning urban design. Diagrammatically, though, to look at the building is to transform it. Uh, a building with two pavilions as terminus needed to be brought in the round, essentially completing the existing building. But by doing that, what we're able to achieve is for the first time in history, give a north face to Spadina. And that is the beginning in a way of giving new identity to the circle as a whole. By doing this also, we produce a new court. That new court, is a flexible uh, hall, a kind of forum where all of the activities of the life of the school could happen. This here event would be happening in that space. But equally importantly, the notion is now that a building as an object within that uh, roundabout is not sufficient. There are ways in which a middle scale can be introduced to acknowledge that other programs other outreaches towards the community, physical and intellectual, can be made through a series of pavilions uh, without which a middle scale could not be achieved. Now, it's important also to acknowledge that there is a beginning to this project and we're sitting in it right now. Uh, renovating, reconceiving, re-engineering this building is one of those major forces. But the south pavilion of that really is a new terrace, a new prospect that will be located right there on axis, looking over the lake, taking advantage of the sun, under which, of course, there's a, a several pieces of infrastructure, bike storage, a cistern, and part of the elaborate uh, narrative of engineering and infrastructure which defines this building. But maybe most importantly, and unexpectedly, while the civic axis is on the north and south, the real everyday uh, axis is on the east and west, what we call the street. The street is what will redefine the culture and the ethos of the life of this school. Coming down North Spadina, going around towards the west, and then entering the building from the side of the neighborhood, one sees the way in which these two buildings come together. But on the opposite side, there is a more generous plaza, a kind of space of the academic community that comes together with a set of bleachers, the famous oak tree emblematic of your very university, and a more generous uh, view towards the campus. All of this to essentially establish a relationship with the street. 
The streets is a program space. It is where everything comes together. Every student is to have a locker within the street, the lounge, the cafe, uh, the fab lab, uh, the printing offices, all of those things which characterize the collective necessities of the students and the faculty will happen uh, on the street. And in its center, a new oculus will be opened towards the north, not only opening up the view behind me as we have towards the south, but also drawing in light to the core of the building. The core of the building then, to the left is the oculus, to the right is the main gate, if you like, the main doorway into the new multi-purpose hall, the auditoria uh, and uh, a, a space of flexibility. So one knows today, above all, that a building beyond being great architecture is also an investment. So we need to think, and we have thought throughout the process, is the best way to use the resources available to achieve the goals of the university and create spaces that are not just used for a few hours a day, but that can be used on the cycle of an architecture school which often runs 24-7. So the notion of the auditorium, the interior courtyard, is above all one of flexibility. The notion that there's bleacher seating, the notion that you can seat over 400 people here for a large scale event, the notion that everyone can see and participate in either the theater or the teaching of this around it and that idea of bringing in natural light even to the deepest spaces, again, allows the space to be transformed to smaller uses when needed. So that while it's not in use for a great space, you can again see it broken up as smaller spaces. This, I think, helps the notion of the daylighting, but not only that, of highlighting the activity. I think one of the things that's so great about architecture school that all of us will remember in any aspect of design was that notion of participating in the work of others. And one learns so much by the great professors we have as well as the peers we work together, exposing the studio, undergraduate and graduate, blending those populations, allowing different disciplines to mix, is really at the heart of the creation of these spaces. Our, the architectural discipline, one may say, is one of the only schools where the critique is the main platform of transmitting knowledge where both teacher and student are on a level playing field. Uh, and this is one of the great contributions to the spaces of the, of the new building. So again, this idea that we can use spaces for multiple things. The idea of this raked seating, this platform, this bleacher seating that is overflow for an event such as this when you want to be able to watch from various points within the building also doubles as a social space, a place to go sit with your friend and have a cup of coffee, the place to have an informal critique and meet with your professor, put a few things up on the wall and have a look at them. All of this is conceived of in the idea of getting the absolute most of, of the built square footage for the use and the goals of the building. A large, monumental 30-foot wall slides in front of the window on the left to transform that space into a space of critique. From the studio hall, there's a direct link then to this multi-purpose space. And in turn, it draws light into the core of the building. So if we're able to return to a moment, for a moment, of that no, notion of flexibility, these are some of the ideas one would have in the ability to reconfigure the space so that one could have several classes going on at the same time. All of this would be achieved within either conventional movable walls or seating that would be reconfigured in different ways. Again, this allowed the building to go forward with less square footage, but with the classroom required for the program in the, the Daniels faculty, which continues to grow year after year. The street is quite active, but then there's one important connection that takes you up, a promenade that engages all of the main elements up into the main graduate studio. The graduate studio then uh, opens up to the prospect uh, to North Spadina. In turn, engaging in all of the landscape elements, the extension of the fabrication lab, and uh, the circulation around the perimeter uh, of the site. One of the things about this site that's so unique is that while it is a university site, it so clearly also belongs to the city of Toronto. You cannot conceive of the building and then the landscape. The entire notion is that the building and the landscape become one when you're in the round such as this on one of Toronto's crescents. 
Therefore, there is no separation between the two. The notion is that one should blend from the inside to the outside, the architecture and the landscape. As a reflection of the cultural moment in which we find ourselves, we should also remind ourselves that design is not the same thing it used to be 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, we are not any longer chained to our own desks. We are on laptops, we are in wired spaces. Design happens in the library as research. Design happens in the fabrication lab as real-time, big-scale mock-ups are occurring uh, around us. And design is everywhere. So the configurability of the spaces of design is equally important. And there are two renditions of this. On the one hand, the acknowledgement that small-scale individual spaces, seminar spaces, collective spaces can be reconfigured without any complexity, but also the notion that uh, an open hall uh, uh, with a long span structure without any impediments whatsoever can be appropriated to take on many different characteristics and configurations as needed. The idea, again, that learning happens in the margins as well as in the studio, the idea that where you see these red dotted lines can be informal critique spaces is so critical to the way we learn in design. The architects mixing with the landscape, with the urban, with the film, with the Global Cities Institute, the idea of the fine arts students, the, the notion that there's space to hang, space to see the students, space to see what your neighbor, colleagues, and peers are doing is absolutely critical to the notion of these floor plans. There is also a challenge about who does architecture belong to? This is a building, as in all schools of architecture, where it is at the service of about 500 to 1,000 students who should rightfully be able to take over that space. So in a way, our architecture starts at seven feet and above, but below that space is a space where transformability and the architecture of the students reigns. One can't talk about a building in this day and age, and least of all a school of architecture, without speaking about sustainability and environmental responsibility. The most sustainable notion one can take is a building like this, which is so much a part of the city, and repurpose it, improve its performance, and bring in systems that will make it a more comfortable place, <coughs> use less energy, and generally be a better performing structure. Conceptually, the various terraces of the project are conceived of as pieces of landscape the top landscape of which is dedicated to the bringing in of light down to the core of the building. And again, one must highlight that a building of architecture is so much about the 24-7 use, the daytime use, the nighttime use. As is with the University of Toronto in general, we are not adding a large amount of parking. In fact, there really is not parking on the space. We try to capitalize on the fact that we are in a civic position that takes advantage of pedestrian, takes advantage of transit. And we also understand that the responsibility we have to ensure that our systems are indeed part of the architecture itself. As an example, one of the key features of this building has to do with the way in which we integrate a structural system of the truss at the top with a hydrological strategy, with a daylighting strategy, and a way to manage all of this uh, as it disseminates through the site. In other words, the identity of the building, the image of the building, if you like, is an index, is a mirror of how the building works. So Richard and his team gave us the mandate from the very beginning that this building needed to be absolutely overtly sustainable, that it needed to be a teaching tool to the students, to the faculty, and those in the city of what a building can be, and to use the resources available responsibly. And therefore, I think as you see the sort of notion of the integration of the landscape in the building, and hopefully you'll take the time to go upstairs and take a look at some of the other diagrams and, and uh, renderings that we have. Um, we really hope that this building will begin the dialogue of helping understand what an architecture school can be. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Daniels.